Today's presentation is by Debbie Newslow. Debbie is president of DL Newslow and Associates. Debbie has authored books including the ISO 9000 Quality System Applications in Food and Technology and Food Safety Management Programs Applications Best Practices and Compliance. Take it away, Debbie. Well, thank you very much. Uh, today we're going to talk about GM the GMP compliance for the future. So let, let's start with what are GMPs? GMPs are defined in 21 CFR 117 subpart B. This is actually part of the new FSMA rule in the US. Uh, 21 CFR 117 uh, is the full, the full section is the preventive controls for, for human food. However, uh, GM, the new GMPs, 21 CFR 117 subpart B is part of that. This is an update from the previous definition, which was found in 21 CFR 110. The 110 version has been phased out. Most of us have grown up with 110. It's been around forever. But 21 CFR 117 subpart B includes everything that we're used to in 110. Plus, it has, has a little bit, a few added sections, which I will also go over. Anyone who manufactures, processes, packs, or holds food or beverage is required to comply with, with GMPs. There are several sections which include personnel, plant and grounds, sanitary operations, sanitary facilities and controls, equipment and utensils, processes and controls, warehousing and distribution, holding and distribution by human food byproducts for use as animal food, and defect levels. A lot of these look familiar to you, both from the 21 CFR 110 and also um, pretty much they are prerequisite programs that are part of um, a GFSI um, benchmark CPOs, if you're, if you're familiar with those or if you're certified to one of those. So let's look at personnel, 117-110. Basic, this has been around, really hasn't changed. Um, basic um, cleanliness and disease control um, fits right into don't work sick. If you come to work sick, tell your supervisor. You don't want to um, contaminate the food if you're sick. This is especially true if you have a fever, or if you're vomiting, or if you have diarrhea. Wear, wear clean clothes, shower daily, daily uh, trim your nails when needed, wash your hands before starting work, after eating, smoking, or using the bathroom. Wash your hands, wash your hands correctly. We'll maybe talk about that a little bit later, but wash for 20 seconds. No exposed jewelry except a plain, except possibly a plain wedding band. Some companies will allow the wedding band, some do not. Some companies that allow the wedding band say that you can't have any rings that have any, any uh, stones or, or anything like that. I like to really challenge the wedding band being allowed because that becomes a food safety issue. Not a food safety issue, I'm sorry, a, a human safety issue. Over my many years in the industry, I've known at least three people that have either lost a finger or came very close to losing their finger because they had their wedding band on and they were maybe climbing a ladder and got their finger stuck. Gloves must be intact and change when necessary. When you put your gloves on, you must first wash your hands before you put the gloves on. This is critical. You wear hair nets and beard nets. Beard nets may also be known as snoots. Hair nets are very important. Um, there's been a, a few surveys as to the effectiveness of hair nets, and they must be worn correctly. Keep personal items out of production areas. Personal items would be things like cell phones, purses, things like that. And don't eat in production. Um, many companies will allow you possibly to have water, or they'll have a water, a water unit there, or you'll be allowed to have bottled water. But don't want to eat in production because you could cross-contaminate especially when you look at allergen control. So this is another personnel, a picture of personnel where you know, someone wearing a hairnet and a beard snood. That hairnet could be worn just a little bit better. You do see some hair showing underneath it on the watch and the ring. And also, and that ring does have, um, I don't know if you can see it. My, my, there you go. The ring does have some stones in it. And then this is wearing, uh, wearing jewelry um, around you know, around your neck. This many people try to get away with this, but you don't want it to fall into the food. It does happen. Plants and grounds. 
Eliminate pest harborage, remove litter and waste, cut tall grass and weeds. You don't want any place that the pests can hang out. Maintain the roads, yards, and parking lots in good condition. No standing water. Standing water can be tracked all over the place, causing mud and, and undesirable conditions, and also there, it's, it's a, a breeding grounds for insects. Have adequate waste treatment and disposal. Make sure the waste treatment area is kept closed, the covers around the compactors and, and the dumpsters, and if at all possible, keep those away from the building. Pay attention to your neighbors. Are, are there any issues that, that could cause a hazard or bring a hazard into your facility from your neighbors? Tall grass is a good example. I had a client that had to cut the neighbor's grass because it was so tall that they were, they were afraid that they were gonna get rodent hits. So this is the grounds and grounds. You can see a, this is a well-looking parking lot. This is not so well-looking outside with, with the dumpster and with empty pails and just a bunch of trash. You don't want to have this kind of situation because it, it causes a place for harborage and just, it just isn't, isn't good manufacturing practice to, to not have a neat, clean area free of trash and well-organized. The plant itself, this kind of falls under internal, internal controls. Provide enough space around equipment to allow for maintenance and cleaning. Eliminate potential sources of cross-contamination by engineering. Protect outdoor bulk storage and loading operations. Use protective coverings, control areas over and around the vessels. Check for pests and skim fermentation vessels. Floors, walls, and ceilings must be cleanable and in good repair no drips, provide adequate shatterproof lighting and ventilation. Airflow must be managed to avoid cross-contamination. Adequate screening or other pest protection for doors, windows, and other openings to the outside. You don't want any openings to the outside because pets, uh, creatures can come in, can crawl in, um, birds can get in and so forth. You want the area, the, um, area secure. This is a picture of inside, where you can see just a comment that these areas should be kept clean. Um, most people will keep these on a sanitary matrix that they've cleaned possibly every, every six months, cobwebs removed and so forth more frequently. Depending on the operation, the product that you're making, will, a lot of it will depend on how often you have to keep these areas and, and do a, a cleaning. This is an area inside the building where this is left this is open, this must be protected, plus there's water on the floor. Water, again, will help breed insects, will cause problems, create um, micro microorganisms will grow, not to mention a safety hazard. And another issue with piping on the floor and joints not secured or red joints. Sanitary operations. Buildings and fixtures must be maintained in clean and sanitary condition and kept in good repair. Cleaning and sanitizing compounds must be safe and adequate, and this must be verified. You must have a letter of guarantee or an SDS on file and review. Cleaning compounds must be identified and stored separately. Actually, most of the standards will say and store it in a secured manner. Pest control is required. If you're doing food on site, you have to make sure that the chemicals are kept separate from the operation and are under and are stored securely. Food contact and non-food contact surfaces must be sanitized as regularly as necessary to maintain, maintain clean and sanitary operations. Personally, I don't like as regular as necessary. That's a wishy-washy word, but it does depend on the operation and the type of food. There's some, some products that you have to sanitize every eight hours, some once every 24 hours, some not so frequently. So you determine, based on your operation, exactly what is required, have it on a schedule, and have records to, deter, to confirm that you're doing what you say you're doing. Clean and sanitized equipment and utensils must be protected from con con contamination. More on sanitary operations. This is a glue board in a walkway where they have storage or they have this this may be in a cooler but it's in a walkway where they're protecting against pests this is a um th this is a um, i don't know a table 
and the table has several open shelves and just about everything is in here. Not sure what that cleaning chemical is. This is probably gloves, paper towel, ear things. You, non -food, food contact surfaces, food equipment with food contact surfaces must be kept in a protected manner. Chemicals that, that are approved for food contact surfaces must be stored properly. This type of miscellaneous storage is not acceptable in a food processing facility. Sanitary facilities and controls. Adequate water supply, enough water and from a good source. Plumbing must provide enough drainage. Backflow preventers must have records of backflow prevention testing. You must be sure you have at least a two inch air gap from within for pipes that are going directly to the drain. You do not want the pipe in a manner that it can be submerged in the drain, which if something happens in the pressure, it could backflow into your water system and contaminate a lot of, lot, contaminate everything basically. Clean toilet facilities and enough for the number of employees. Clean toilet facilities and functionable toilet facilities. So many times we'll go into restrooms and find, find that the uh, hand, the hand, Soap is not fun, is not full, or it doesn't work properly, or the paper towel racks, and the dispenser is not functioning, or it's broken, or half half on the wall and half off the wall. You need to be clean and functional. Hand washing sinks must have hot and cold running water, soap, and paper towels. Hand washing sinks are are for hand washing, not for equipment. So we don't like to see equipment or anything else in the hand washing sink during when processing. Rubbish waste must be disposed of properly so as not to attract pests or contaminate production. Sanitary facilities. This is a nice clean sink with paper towel, with paper towel. Well, first you wash your hands, a hand washing sign, and then also the um, soap dispenser. This is not quite so, um, if, although it might be effective, it's not, not quite what we look for. Equipment and utensils. Equipment and utensils. Equipment must be cleanable and well maintained. Avoid adulteration with lubricants, metal fragments, and contaminated water. Insulation must facilitate cleaning and maintenance. Food contact surfaces must be corrosion resistant, made of non toxic materials and able to withstand normal operations. Seams must be smoothly bonded and, and maintained to avoid accumulation of, of crud or any other kind of buildup. Freezers and coolers must have temperature indicating devices. Uh, ideally, they would be equipped with alarms that would, would go off at a set temperature if it got too warm. If you do have the alarms, then you need to test them and ensure that they work. Instruments used for measurements such as temperature, pH, alcohol content, water activity, Etc. must be accurate and precise, and it also must be calibrated. You have records of calibration, have, have the evidence of calibration labeled on, if, on the equipment if possible, or as close to the equipment as possible. Compressed air used in food contact areas must be treated to avoid contamination. Equipment and utensils, they need to be stored properly. This, these are two pictures that show clutter and chaos and, and definitely cleaning materials not stored properly. Processes and controls. Processes and controls, all operations must be conducted in accordance with sanitary principles. Quality control must be in place for both products and packaging. Responsibility for sanitation must be assigned to one or more competent individuals or, or as the FISMA says qualified individuals that are trained in their area of responsibility, trained and educated. I like to use education because training is more like you're training somebody like Pablo's dog. You ring the bell and they come. Education is teaching people really understanding what they're doing and why. Adequate precautions must be taken against cross-contamination. Chemical, microbial, or farm material testing must be employed where necessary. Yeah, where necessary, again, is, some, is one of those words, one of those phrases that you must fill out. You don't write in your procedures, we do this as necessary or where necessary. Here's where, where your, for your operation, for your process, for the product that you're 
manufacturing, you determine what is necessary, you define that, and you, and you follow your procedure, and then you keep records to demonstrate that you have done what you say you're going to do. Any food that is contaminated to the extent that it has become adulterated must be rejected, treated, or processed to eliminate the contamination. More processes and controls, just sloppy, scattered storage practices, um, overflowing in the process area, just not a good way to, to operate. Handling raw materials and ingredients, also under processes and controls. Raw materials and ingredients must be inspected and segregated as necessary until they are determined to be clean and acceptable for use. Water must be of adequate sanitary quality. It must be a drinking water. How do you know this? What is your proof? Do you test it? Do you get results from your city, et cetera? Reuse of water is acceptable as long as it does not increase the contamination level of the food. We don't see much of that in today's world, but there is some. Raw materials must either not contain unsafe levels of undesirable microorganisms or to be treated per defined requirements again, based on your operation. Raw materials susceptible to contamination with natural toxins, extraneous material, pests, or undesirable microorganisms must comply with FDA regulations. You must understand them and you must know what they are so that you have records, you define procedures to comply with and you keep records to demonstrate conformance. Raw materials must be held properly to prevent adulteration. By properly, we mean they must be maintained as best for the raw material to prevent cross-contamination and to prevent adulteration. Frozen materials must be kept frozen. Bulk receipts must be stored in a manner that protects against contamination. Allergens must be segregated and properly handled. More about processes and control. This is unprotected product. This is damaged product. It looks like it's about to fall, stumble over. Manufacturing operations, as it, as it applies to processes and controls. Equipment and utensils must be maintained so that they can be properly cleaned and taken apart for thorough cleaning where necessary. Again, it's your process, it's your product. You decide where necessary. And you define that, and then you follow your procedure, and you keep records to demonstrate you're doing what you say you're doing. All manufacturing, processing, packing, and holding must be under conditions that prevent decomposition, adulteration, allergen cross-contact, and contamination. Food that can support fast growth of microorganisms must be, kept, must be kept hot or cold, depending on the product. Measures used to control microbial growth must be appropriate and adequate. Again, appropriate and adequate for your product, your operation. Work in process and rework must be properly handled, must be careful that you don't cross-contaminate with allergens, and it must be labeled properly. Finished product must be protected from contamination from raw materials, other ingredients, or, or refuse or waste. Unprotected raw materials and ingredients cannot be handled simultaneously with anything that might contaminate them. Protect food on conveyors. Exposed product must be protected on the equipment. Continuing to the next slide, um, some examples of, of open product that is just strode there. These are gaskets or whatever and buckets. This looks like buckets that might be used for product and now they're holding, they're holding equipment or old equipment or trash. You don't want you have you need to have an effective cross cross contamination process. Equipment containers and used for raw materials, ingredients must be constructed, handled, and maintained in a way that protects against contamination. Adequate precautions must be taken against inclusion of foreign material. Steps such as washing, peeling, cutting, etc. must be performed in a way that protects against contaminants, including anything that might drip, drain, or be drawn in. If ice is used, it must be made from clean water according to GMPs. Ice is considered a food, especially if it comes in contact with the product. If food does become adulterated, it must be disposed of properly so it does not contaminate other food. If it can be reconditioned, then 
then the reconditioning must be done in a way that has been proven effective, that can be reexamined and proven to no longer be adulterated before being incorporated into another food. And more, more possible contamination. Equipment, this probably is a hand washing sink or it's some kind of a sink. Open bucket, there's gaskets here, there's probably a dirty wrench. Over here, there's open product, there's all kinds of stuff up here, lots of dust, and other things. Very cluttered in the corner. Warehousing and distribution. Storage and transportation of food must be under conditions that will protect against contamination as well as against deterioration of the product and the container. So this is showing some store, poor storage practices where it's, uh, everything is kind of scattered here, um, some equipment and stuff that probably needs to be put away or thrown away. Um, this shows door handle where they're handling, where they're hanging their ear, 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 I don't know, soundproof ear, ear protectors. Um, here is uh, some stuff on top of the cabinet. Holding and distribution of human food by products for use as animal food. 21 CFR 117.95. This one is kind of tricky. And this is new with the new with the new regulations. It must must be held under conditions that will protect against contamination. Containers and equipment must be designed, constructed of appropriate material, cleaned as necessary. Again, it's your it's your product. You you define that, and maintain to protect against contamination. It must be held in a way to protect against contamination from sources such as trash, waste, uh, bugs, and things like that. During holding, it must be accurately identified. Labeling that identifies the byproduct by a common or usual name must be affixed when distributed. Shipping containers and bulk vehicles must be examined prior to use. You can refer to 21 CFR 507 for more information about animal food requirements. Cross-contamination. It's all about cross-contamination. What can we do to avoid cross-contamination? A ready to eat, to eat food, it could be from equipment, from a cleaning material, equipment, dirty utensils, dirty hands, meat's not cooked properly, the fruit isn't maintained and washed properly, the staff is, is not maintaining. These are all very critical ways that, that something can be contaminated. Some of the guidelines to avoid cross-contamination is by ensuring laboratory facilities and restrooms do not open direct, directly onto the production areas. Um, install self-closing devices on the restroom doors. Clean thoroughly between runs and perform verification of sanitation activities each time. Segregate product that has not undergone a kill step. Educate staff on hand washing and monitor traffic patterns. Promptly repair cracks in walls, floors, and ceilings. Monitor condensation and avoid drips onto product contact surfaces. Store chemicals properly and control sanitation activity. These are all things that we have actually just talked about. Pest control, it must be proactive. Understand your facility's needs. Look for conducive conditions. Reduce attractants. Pay attention to the exterior. Implement non-chemical exclusion techniques. Maintain a sanitary environment. Implement an employee hygiene program. Train and educate, implement an employee hygiene program, train and educate, maintain records and perform trend analysis, conduct regular prerequisite program assessments, evaluate your pest control, be proactive. How do you know it's effective? Allergen control, closer look. And these sources of recalls, this is, this is um, in May of April, May 2014 shows the number of recalls and what happened. Wrong packaging or labeling, terminology, failure to carry forward information from ingredient to final label, cross contact, which is a new, <clears throat> cross contact is a new uh, terminology with FISMA, which, when, which is used in relation to allergens. Cross contact, ingredient mislabeled and from a supplier. So these are examples of what, what cause food allergen recalls. I believe in 2017, I much, um, it was stated 
that 53% of all recalls came from allergens in one way or another, which is, which is kind of interesting. So we have to be careful with our allergens because this is life-threatening if, if we cross-contact cross contact between allergens and somebody gets sick from it. So allergens and CGMPs, and CGMP, we refer to it as CGMP sometimes, and sometimes we refer to it as GMPs. Really, they mean the same thing. CGMPs is current good manufacturing practices. GMPs is just something that we take as a shortcut because we've always referred to it that way. But we have been talking about current GMPs. And now let's talk. Think, look at allergens and how they're addressed in, this, in the GMPs. The word allergen appears 153 times in the current good manufacturing practice, hazard analysis, risk-based preventive control for human regulation. They mean it. This is, in, this is the 21 CFR 117 Part B. New term, cross-contact. Allergens must be segregated both from each other and from non-allergenic foods. There must be adequate GMPs to ensure there is no cross-contact during storage or processing. Employee training slash education on allergens is required and must be documented. In other words, it must be recorded and you must have proof that everybody has been trained in allergen control. Visually clean is the minimum requirement under law. This, defined, this is defined as no residue, film, or sheen. Do you know what the eight allergens are? They are milk, eggs, fish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, crustacean shellfish, those that crawl, and soybeans. This is for the United States. Each country has their own set of allergens. These are our eight. We call them the big eight. Storage practices, we've touched on this a little bit, but it's still very important to continue and emphasize it. We look for best practices, which include 18-inch parameter between stored items and walls to allow for cleaning and pest control, clearly defined lines on floor to delineate storage areas and footpaths, ensure adequate airflow, temperature, and humidity control, humidity control. Um, not all storage areas require humidity control and temperature control, but that's where it's up to you to define it for your operation. Provide a separate area for non-conforming products. In other words, these are the products on hold or products that have been classified as uh, damaged or must be destroyed. Practice stock rotations such as first in, first out or, for, or first expired, first out. Store waste materials and chemicals separately from food. Avoid the use of forklifts that create exhaust. Be aware of contamination that can be tracked in on forklift wheels and dedicate bulk containers whenever possible. So this concludes our presentation. Thanks, Debbie. That concludes today's presentation.